I'm a brown South African who believes that collectively across all boundaries, you can conquer whatever comes our way. We prove that repeatedly. When we do things together, black and white, from all religions, from all cultures, we can conquer everything. As a proud South African, and someone who respects the constitution of this country, I know that it is more than a document or a leather bound book on a bookshelf. It is a breathing, living document that guides the way we live and respect each other. It is a testament to the will of the negotiators who finished their work in 1996, if you like, the founding fathers and mothers. It is a timely reminder of what we can do when we have set our differences aside and look at the bigger picture to the challenge facing us as a nation. While the Constitution clearly protects freedom of speech, there are growing noises <coughs> and actions that hint that we should be cautious when we speak truth to power. When we speak out against corruption, misuse of power, absence service delivery, discrimination, and insensitivity to the plight of the poor, some so-called leaders are quick to call us counter-revolutionaries, clever whites or clever blacks, capitalists or protectors of minority interests. Our current government, in power for 28 years, has become hypersensitive to criticism. Any and all criticism is rejected whilst empty, speak repeated itself in public, and private platform. What tends to be fashionable is populist language, which takes us nowhere. This, against the backdrop of being criminally weak on delivery, but very energetic on non coercive policy statements. Once we have this void of delivery and little policy certainty, we're faced with the corruption monster. As an ever hungry consumer of the hard-earned <laughs> tax grant money, our justice system is slow and politicized, and our security agencies heavy on statements but light on action. There seem to be several people in leadership positions who are untouchable even in the face of damning findings by the Zono Commission and the other commissions and agencies. Against this troubling optics of government living in the lap of luxury, whilst the electorate is facing power cuts, facing potholes, lack of water, checks for schools, and a strained health system, our government, the NC government, was severely punished at the municipal elections, losing control of prized metropolitan governments and losing majority support in that sphere. I have very little doubt that this trend will continue in the 2024 elections. <laughs> 